Well, with me today is Francesca Simon, author of, as you may know, the great Horrid Henry books. Look at that great big stack I've got there, Francesca, all owned by my son, who Ooh. was very cross that I came away with them. He wanted to be absolutely sure I was coming back with Did them. Did he count them out? He didn't. He did trust me, <laughs> which is quite rare. And we'll also talk about a much newer book, yeah. The Monstrous Child. What yeah. a terrible title. <laughs> quite scary. But let's start with... Horrid Henry, yes. right? Great favourite with millions of children. How did you come up with that character, Horrid Henry? Well, I was thinking a lot about families where there was a good child and a bad child because I had one child, but a lot of my friends were having two. And I was just interested in the way that, fam that parents decided who was the good child, who was the bad child, and that everybody in the family knew this. So I was interested in that. Um, also, I'm a big comic book lover, like every single children's author I've ever met in my life. And I like that kind of zap pow dialogue. But I was just, in, it was a one off story about a family where there's a horrid child and a perfect child. And I just wanted to play around with that because I think families are very funny because almost like the best comedy shows, nobody chooses who is in that family. The kids don't choose the parents, the parents don't choose the kids, and somehow there you all are. So I wrote a little one-off story, which got turned down by my publisher because it wasn't what was requested. Uh -huh. But I had a brilliant editor and she said, I really like the story. Maybe we can add a few more and then we can make it for slightly older kids. And I was really frightened about writing more than one story. And now I've written a hundred. A hundred? A hundred. There are 25 books and a hundred Horrid Henry stories. And I was frightened about writing more than one. And this thing about good child, bad child, mm. That's quite sort of dangerous territory to even go there because, I mean, I'm a parent. You've got, you've got one kid. I've got more than one kid. I wouldn't dare even think that I've got a well, bad child, good child. I mean, those, these terms are relatives. I mean, I have a, a niece and nephew, and when my niece started getting A's at school, her brother instantly started failing at school. So it's more like this sort of balance. I mean, yes. these terms are relatives, but parents know, I mean, if you prefer the naughty child and the well-behaved child. Yes. You know, these, I was interested in playing off those contracts, contrasts, but I was also interested in the fact, which I realized afterwards, but that Horrid Henry and Perfect Peter are two sides of everybody, that these are almost archetypes. So that Inside you, us, we've got a good us, bit and a bad bit. Well, the bit that wants to behave, the bit that, the bit that wants to do well, and then the other bit that wants to run around screaming and pull people's hair and kick things down. So there's this sort of tension in everyone. So in fact, they are two sides of everybody. So when you're making up a story, I'm thinking of some of the children writing yeah. now, you're making up a story. If you think you've got opposites inside you, mm. let's say there's a sporty side or an, a not sporty side or a mm. showy offy side and a shy side, mm. instead of trying to put them into one character, you can split them off. And so you have sporty person and and not sporty well, person and then happened, you've got two characters but that's what happened with all the horrid henry characters because i ha everybody behaves only according to their adjectives so it's moody margaret who's always moody sour susan who's always sour and it was quite funny to do all these characters who only behave in that one specific way weepy yes. william the child who always forgets everything so it's again but that's a side of all of us yes you know everyone remembers it's no uniform day at school except for one child. That's yes. Weepy William <laughs> and my son, of course. Yes. So that's quite a nice tip for people trying to write. I'm thinking is that you pull out of yourself a, mm. uh, what we call a characteristic, a sort of thing about yourself, yeah. and then make that into a whole character. And that's also quite funny as well. Yes. Um, because nobody behaves like that. Yeah. And you know those roles can switch around. But it's also, you know, it was also about parents too. Because yes. the kids as young as four would always tell me that it was the parents who had created Horrid Henry and Perfect Peter. Well, I, I mean, whenever I've read the books, I've always thought, read them to my kids. I've thought, well, actually, the parents, they're, they're kind of, they're not actually that good. They're are not. They? They're, they're not well really... meaning, but they've created yeah. Why can't you, you know, the old joke about why can't you be work as hard as your brother. Why can't you be as good as yes. your sister? And that is like guaranteed if someone said that yes. to you to make you want to be the exact exact opposite. Yes, and my favorite line in all your books is don't be horrid, Henry. And you think, well, what else is he gonna be if he isn't gonna be horrid? Well, because the yes. first story though is a bit funny because I only thought of it as one story because it's an odd one to begin with because it's Henry's horrid. Okay, he's gonna try to be perfect. 
But the joke of that is, of course, the parents make endless excuses for Peter, Peter behaving badly and Henry's behavior they just don't see. Yes, yes. Um, so this idea that maybe the parents are to blame, if you like, if we're going to do any blaming, the parents are yeah, to blame for are. this horrific stuff going on. That they are, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they have a kid who doesn't fit in with what they want. Yeah. So it's about that as well on, a, on another level. But mainly it's meant to be very funny, and I think they are, because Henry is so impulsive. And that was the other thing I wanted to explore about. We're always told, you know, don't do this, don't do that, don't enter. And so it's a sort of safe way of, of kind of expiating all those desires. And the door says, do not enter. And Henry goes, oh, I wonder what's there and goes in. Yes. So it's, it's that kind of freedom to mm. express yourself. So it's like it's all the reasons why everyone loves, you know, going to films, reading books, seeing theater is you get the chance to explore safely what it's like to do this, what it's to like do to do the things you mustn't do. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The other thing about Henry, which I love, is that he's always plotting, isn't he? He's always <gasps> scheming. He's always trying to think of some plan. Well, it, it, though I'm quite careful with that because it, it's very rare. He doesn't s sit on his bed and think, today I'm going to ruin the wedding. It's always that he wants something. And that's how I construct all the stories. So I always think, what does Henry want? Henry wants to get home in time to watch his favorite program. What's stopping him that? Well, because he has to go to this wedding. Well, maybe he can speed things up. So it's more in aid of getting something else right. that stuff happens and that he's greedy too. So he will plot to get things, but only in the moment. It's very rare that he plans things beforehand. He's, he's impulsive, which is what makes him funny. Because we discovered early on that if he plotted too much early on, that stopped being funny. And also, you get too much of what's going to happen, so you want to exactly. hide that. Exactly. So you're starting, so just in terms of like developing a character, you start from something that he wants. He's got to have it. Totally key. And, and he must have it. And there's things going on in life that are stopping him. He has to go, he has to go with his brother to the dentist. He doesn't want to. He wants to stay home and read his comic book. Yeah. So stuff will come from that. What does he want? What's stopping him getting what he wants? Yes. And what's the outcome? And often I don't know. I just kind of put them, well, I put them in the situation and kind of listen to them. So if you have sort of strong characters, it's almost like you put them in a white box with a situation and then you kind of let them go. Or, you know, both Henry and Peter want the same toy. Yes. So what happens? And I will explore what happens, usually the toy being destroyed or one of them changes his mind, but all that sibling stuff, because I'm the eldest of four. Oh, right. And I was always, um, what's the word? I, it, you know, if you have four kids, you kind of depend on the older one behaving because there's just too many kids. So, so you had to be the goody. I had to be the so I was the goody at school. Really good. I don't think there's <laughs> ever been such a good child in the world as me at school. And I was terrible at home. So I was, you know, a horrid Henry at home and perfect Peter at school. Wonderful, Francesca Simon. Thanks ever so much indeed. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank that you, you came Michael. And talk to us. Now, it'd be great if you subscribed. That is, you become a subscriber. Look out for the subscribe button. What happens, you see, is that I make new vids every few months and then I post them up one a week. So if you subscribe, you get to see the new ones just as they come hot off the press. Eww.